Okay, welcome to Rock Docs, a podcast about music documentaries. I'm David Lizabram, here with my co-host... Andrew Keats. And, uh, yeah, today we don't have a particular documentary to discuss. We actually had a, a guest cancel on us, or postpone, which happens. So instead you get uh, a little bit of a catch-all topics, catching up on a few things, etc. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, lot going on in the Rock Docs world, so... Plenty to catch up on. Exactly. Uh, anything you have to uh, share before we jump into this? <laughs> no, but you suggested that as though I had been like harboring some bad news or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you did. I'm good. I got nothing. Now's the it. time. All right. Um, oh, by the way, I should add uh, we're at Rock Docs Pod on Twitter and uh, elsewhere. Okay. That was good. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, we kind of threw out a last minute. Uh, thing for comments and questions and topics and things like that. We had a couple uh, that were kind of uh, interesting. And um, then the other thing I want to talk about, if we get a chance, is uh, biopics, which was a hot topic in the in the Rock Docs Twitter world this yeah. last week. Yeah, so, somebody did one of those prompts that really caught the attention of music Twitter. It was something. Okay, yeah. um, let's see. Somebody asked. Uh, oh, Michael Grochowski. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Michael Grochowski Asked uh, A couple things How do you pick which docs you're going to do How do you prep for discussing them And also if there are any docs You're excited to get around to When you're back at it regularly Which were sort of in summer mm -hmm. You want to tackle those in any particular order well, let's see. Let, let's start with how we how we choose. How do we choose, Andy? Uh, it's not scientific. Really? Uh, I would say, well, so we s sort of start, I would say, within any like eight or ten episode season with some some guests in mind. Right. Sure. And we always uh, allow guests to, to make their own calls. That's true. If we have a guest episode, the vast majority of the time we, unless it's like we want you to come and talk about this thing. Yeah. Most of the time, it's like, hey, what do you want to talk about? Right. And then from there, we want the the group of episodes to be somewhat uh, diverse in their time period, in their genres, uh, in their demographics. And so we sort of try to start triangulating from the first couple to like, well, we there's, there's like three episodes there from the 90s. What is something we could watch that would be an older movie or about an older artist um, or the, you know, the, all three of those are, are classic rock bands. Is, do, is there a rap movie we could watch? Is there something about the, the '60s we could watch, etc.? Yeah, I think that's kind of where we start. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes a movie will come out and command the attention of the rock dogs world. Yeah, and we'll be like, let's do that. We're not great at being topical. We we work with a lead time, and that that yeah. tends to cut against any attempts for us to be uh, sort of there when something is, is new or released. But we, we we eventually get to those. The problem is we have jobs and families. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. The you know the the, the it's really the, holding us back. The steady stream of new docs though has uh worked out to our benefit. There's there's always been something that we could watch. And those are good too because they're easy for people to watch. Like some right. of the ones we pick that are like deeper cuts. It's like it's like if it's if it's difficult for people to stream it's not always great for us. Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes we have a plan and then we forget the plan. Yeah, so. that, that's happened eight or ten <laughs> times. Yeah. Yes. And we then we a really do a great idea. Like, we could do a three-episode series on this, and then we don't yeah. remember to do that. We, we do have a, a master list um, of, of big ones that we intend to get to. Some we've mentioned numerous times over the previous 20, however many episodes um, that – that we'll eventually get to, but we don't want to. We don't. We don't want to use up all the classics right out of the gate. So we're sort of trying to parse them out. Yeah, there's kind of like a group of well-known mm -hmm. big rock docs. Your some kinds of monsters, your histories of the Eagles and such. Yeah, and I guess we kinda, we'll get to them. Yeah, we just don't want to blow it all out yeah. at once. Yeah. We're, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, Am exactly. I right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's kind of like how we decide what we're gonna do. Prep for, for how prep do we prep? prep? Uh, so most of these I've I had uh, it, I have seen before, sometime you know m months ago or years ago. Not always. Uh, there's been a handful of episodes that we watched for the first time for the show. Usually we've mentioned that. Um, so 
it comes to rewatching them, and I usually try to rewatch them at least twice before an episode. I take notes while I'm doing it, and then uh, I try to supplement with interviews, old research, archival clips, that sort of thing. Um, sometimes they do a better job of others than that, with that stuff, but usually there's there's some stuff that stands out that I want to get more information about, and the stuff that stands out usually there is more information floating around out there about it. Yeah, you're kind of more of the investigative journalist guy. Yeah, but you're uh, the more like knows about music guy. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but um, y- yeah, you do tend to come armed with like having read more stuff. Yeah. Sometimes I'll read up on the director or the something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same thing with me. Uh, I try to in the run up to recording, I try to watch the documentary at least twice. Yeah. Uh, more if I can. Uh, I take notes, um, which are, if you saw them, they would be the ravings of a madman. <laughs> There's n- they're not coherent in any way. It's like, hey, that guy, <laughs> or whatever. We're watching We're watching one right now that was the one we were going to have an episode about today that um, uh, the, my notes on would just be insane. So <laughs> many exclamation marks. Yeah. I think eight or ten songs I might have declared as the greatest song ever <laughs> just to be trumped later in that mo- in the course of that movie by a different song uh, yeah I was, I was I'm enthusiastic about that one there's a, a big tease for an upcoming episode I will say that uh, if we're peeking behind the uh, kimono if we yeah. may quote sparks I think that was a sparks quote yeah um, that I uh, start every movie uh, thinking like what am I going to say about this? This is going to be a disaster. Uh, why? Why am I doing this to myself? Like, what? What the hell are we going to talk about? Well, that was how I started. I started doing a bunch of background research. Was just yeah. like I can't go in there unarmed with just my <laughs> my ill formed thoughts. I need, yeah, I need to collect some interviews with some. What else have people said about this? <laughs> yeah, I just feel like I'm going to have literally nothing to say. Mm-hmm. And then usually by the time I've watched it once, certainly twice, I have like a whole like more Sony notes that I'm like, why do I need Andy? I could just <laughs> monologue on this. <laughs> the Andy and or the guest is just going to hold me back. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, uh, I guess that's, uh, that's well, kind of our process, right? Yeah. What's the last question there? The last question was, um, are there any docs you're excited to get around to when you're back at it regularly? Kind of alluded to that a little bit. Yeah. So I think the, the ones I, the one I think about the most because I'm just not sure how we should handle it is a long strange trip. Yeah, the Grateful Dead doc. Yeah, it's so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like what? It's five hours, I guess. Yeah, six hours maybe. It might be six hours. And we both have a lot to say about the Grateful Dead in yeah. general. That I I don't know how we can do one episode. It <laughs> seems like it has to be at least two parts. I mean, it's. Like five one-hour episodes, which yeah. when we were starting, that was like how there's no way we would ever tackle that. But when, now that I think about it, we've done Get Back and Genius, yeah, Genius both of which yeah. were longer. Right. Um, we've done uh, the Tom Petty one was like four hours. Like yeah. it, it time-wise, it's no longer seems intimidating. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of the amount of information, that's one where it's like the entire career of like this ginormously important band to both of us and to in history with just so much happening and so many characters that we know so much about right it's not like a bit a doc about a musician where we're just discovering this person yeah like hey i didn't know that much about mavis staples or whatever like yeah. great this is really interesting uh you know you and i could off the dome do a podcast episode about the grateful dead you know all day long right now <laughs> you know unprompted so um we'll spare you that but um we hardly need the movie to hold us back from that. Yeah. So yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, certainly, and this has come up a lot, history of the Eagles. Um, I, I, I enjoy that one being sort of something that we, that we don't actually ever talk about. We only, <laughs> we only talk about talking about sometime in the future. Although our, our, our friend and, and, uh, and once, once and potentially future guest, Eamon mentioned to us that we don't have to make every movie about the Eagles. <laughs> to, to which you sagely responded, well, we, we don't. We make every movie about the film, the history of the Eagles. We don't actually care about the Eagles at all. Yeah, we've never mentioned the Eagles <laughs> once. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. We've only mentioned a film about them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, shout out to Eamon. Uh, 
that's uh that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean there's 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 a handful of movies that I that I like that I think we'll eventually get to that um I probably have a lot to say about like uh, I'm trying to break your heart. Yeah. Would be one that I'm I'm excited about at some point. I'm trying to think what else really stands out to me. I mean, there's three Oscar winners that we haven't talked yeah. about. Amy, 20 Feet from Stardom, and Searching for Sugar Man. All three of those would be great. We've got to knock those out yeah. one of these days. Um, yeah, like I said, some kind of monster. I don't know if we would do, like, the Beatles anthology. I mean, I guess why not? Like, right? Like, we've done these big ones. Yeah, I don't... I mean, there's just still so much low-hanging fruit on the tree. I feel like we haven't barely scratched the surface. So. Right, and we... I mean, we haven't done Don't Look Back like we did, you know, yeah. the Dylan... Um, uh, Rolling Thunder review of Martin Scorsese's story about Bob Dylan. Um, yeah. But and, we, we will do Don't Look Back at some point. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, there's, and I guess maybe eat the document. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, so there's obviously plenty of uh, plenty of good ones. And then in terms of other ones we're excited to do, like, I mean, in terms, we've talked a little bit about some upcoming documentaries, Meet Me in the Bathroom, if you, there's a Credence one coming up. Uh, there's uh, Bowie. The, the Bowie, yeah, Moon Age Daydream one. Um, so there's quite a few that um, have been announced mm-hmm. that uh, we're looking forward to getting to. Uh, there's uh, the Hallelujah Leonard Cohen one that I think looks really cool. Want to check that out. Um, and um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of it uh, in terms of ones we're excited about. And also, like, um, I don't know. I really do feel like uh, if we have, uh, if there's any fault that we have which you know i mean it's far be it for me to say <laughs> uh ample but yeah but. is that um you know we, we we probably left our own devices tend to drift into a kind of classic rock uh dad rock zone yeah and uh making the effort to expand that to to older documentaries documentaries about different types of music we really haven't done anything about like a jazz country. artist or anything like that country um, we did a little bit of hip hop, but we've done, I guess, two. But you know, again, barely scratching the surface there. Um, punk, metal, blah 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 blah. Uh, you know, we did, you know, the fish one, which was the jam band world. But I don't know how many more. I mean, like other than the Grateful Dead specifically, I don't know if there's a lot of jam band docs out there. But there's a widespread panic doc. Okay, we can we, we can put that on the short list if you'd wow. like. Fired up. <laughs> if you want, we could do. I that. mean, if it's good or it's, it's like worth talking earth, about, the earth will swallow you. I believe is what it's called. Far out, man. Right. Um, so anyway, you know, and I'm leaving aside uh, thousands of genres of music um, from all around the world. Uh, we have not done. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty, plenty of good, interesting music docs that are not even in English that uh, would be worth a check out. Yeah. So. Um, I think maybe those need to be suggested to us or pointed out to us. I mean, we could try to track it down, but, uh, uh, yeah, if we are asking for suggestions, I mean, if your favorite rock doc is, uh, you know, one we've talked about, great. Um, but, uh, if you know about stuff that's outside of the comfort zone we've talked about, by all means, yeah, let us know about it because we're, uh, we're well known to be (laughs) open-minded. Everybody says that about us. (laughs) Uh, yeah, so that covers that question. There was another comment we got, or a question, or whatever, that was kind of interesting. Uh, this is from a band called the Pomegranate County Irregulars. Pomegranate County Irregulars. Okay. That's a cool band name, not the most pronounceable, uh, but I do like Pomegranates. So it's probably, cool. SEO's got to be really high with that one. That's true. A lot of bands these days, poor SEO, I gotta say. Yeah, that's true. Mm. I don't know, Pup, that's a popular band now. <laughs> yeah. It seems like there's probably a lot of dog related content it's gonna yeah. come up uh so um yeah what, this, what did they have to say <laughs> this is their com- this is their not really a comment it's not certainly not a question okay uh but but a topic and it's, would, it, would you call it an insult no no okay. not an insult we've gotten a few of those um <laughs> <clears throat> uh a topic is watching those early rock and roll movies and someone let's say bill haley in the comments yeah. is performing and when the ground breaking epic creating solo occurs there's a cutaway for some inane dialogue only to return for the final verse irritates me to no end yeah that's a good take that's a very specific take <laughs> he's whoever wrote that i don't know anything about that band man woman or otherwise that that is that's a good take by that person <laughs> we might need to have you come on to yeah. elaborate and to provide specific examples well so i guess maybe i'll just i'll, I'll lift the veil here and say the the episode we were going to do an epi- the the movie we were going to do an episode on today was Erg a Music War. Yeah. 
and there's no talking in that. Yes. This presents new ground for us in terms of a, a straight concert film, although it was like 36 different concerts. Sure. Um, but it, it struck me watching it how absolutely over-narrated virtually every rock doc is. Right. And how much those moments just don't need to exist for the most part. It, like no one breaks into the movie and, and says, now you got to understand the thing with Devo, nobody had ever done anything like this before. This was so new. And outside of it, like none, none of that turns out you get all of that context just by being a semi-intelligent person and watching and paying attention. And, uh, like, you know, bringing in Chris Gow or whatever to, to tell you it, it doesn't really add that much. Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the other side and say okay. pomegranate county regulars. Yeah. OK. I mean, I hear you. But on the other hand, let's say it's 1956 and you're out with your baby on a Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. Going to a movie. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, whatever. You're watching this movie and then in the middle of the movie, there's like a popular band shows up to perform a little bit of that rock and roll you've been hearing so much about uh do you really care about the guitar solo i mean i personally sitting here in 2022 may want to see what you know scotty moore or whoever of the day uh was playing um on the guitar but i don't think at the time they were thinking like well this is you know this electric guitar is really going somewhere and you know it's seems kind of trivial right now but in about 10 years it's gonna be the biggest thing going it's gonna be like the symbol of music in america for the entire world for like ever (laughs) and um so we should really focus in on that and not on the like you know good looking singer who's (laughs) you know about to you know make off with this chick i mean that's not what people go to the movies for even now mm-hmm. uh unless you're watching a rock dog and you're a weirdo <laughs> and um certainly not 60 some years ago um so i'm just going to defend uh hollywood okay um on that on that level i mean they weren't they didn't foresee mtv or people caring about really seeing musicians doing their thing yeah in fact, i mean as a million rock dogs have made clear it was uh seen at the time as most likely a passing fat. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, while it irritates you to no end, and I, I too, you know, feel you. <laughs> it's annoying that they cut away. Maybe if the dialogue would not have been inane. Yeah, that's true. You know, maybe they just should have hired a better writer for this, you know, hail, hail, rock and roll type, whatever. Um, okay. That's a take. Um, all right. So the other thing that kind of was the topic du jour. Yes. If I may slip into French. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, recently, uh, yeah, was uh, biopics. Yeah, Andy, have we been too harsh on the biopic? Uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, I think all we've, I, I guess, we were pretty dismissive in at least one episode. I, I, I mean, my memory of the time we've talked about it was was it about the the news that Jonah Hill was playing Jerry in the Scorsese maybe. biopic? Maybe. I I mean I basically stand by my take that whenever I hear about one I expect it to not be very good. Right. And that when I do see them for mo- the most part they're not very good. That said there's no like <laughs> there's no rule that they have to be bad. I just I just think most of them aren't especially good. That's all. And yeah. and the vast majority of them I think would be better off as a good rock doc. Right. <laughs> you know yeah, like that exactly. <laughs> that's really the, the issue. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, like the Scorsese Jonah Hill one is a good example in that Martin Scorsese almost only makes good movies, right? And I think Jonah Hill's actually the the right person to play Jerry Garcia if you're gonna book somebody, or at least it's a pretty good casting. And yet, somehow, I still can't bring myself to imagine that that movie's gonna happen, or that I'm gonna like it if it does. Yeah, even though I've like I, I don't I don't remember the last Scorsese movie I didn't like. Yeah, so I I don't know, but I just track record seems not so good. Track record, that's the the deal. The, their batting average on biopics seems pretty low to me. Okay, so I think we got a couple things happening here. I think we may have a little bit of recency bias. Okay, fair enough. There it's- there have been a run lately, and they've not been so good. It's possible that, like many classical Hollywood mm-hmm. genres, 
the music biopic has become crappy. Yeah. Or they're just not making good ones, you know, like they used to. Or whatever you may say about it, right? What would you count as the recent era? Oh, uh, I, I think, uh, I think Ray yeah. is the, uh, the blueprint. Yeah. Because it comes Ray out. Com- Ray, Ray was following in the path of Walk the Line, right? Wasn't that like no. two years after I think Walk the Line? Walk the Line was fine. Ray and Walk the Line. The, it, really. I, I would agree. That's basically okay. The, the you time, got yeah. Ray and Walk the Line, where you have Academy Award winning performances, yeah, uh, and um, beloved fifties icons yeah. being brought to the screen, and and really like an effort to modernize the music in a way, yeah. honor it, but uh, but modernize the music and and to take and and to not just make like. A movie about hey, here's a musician, and this is some things that happen to them, but mm-hmm. to make it about a thing like an issue, mm-hmm. like it's either, the Ray thing was about racism and his struggles with um, drugs and uh, and and with women, and um, and the 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 Walk the Line one was you know about uh, the drug problem, and and you know it they're trying to elevate the genre almost more than and, and it and make it respectable. Yeah, and make it uh, important and significant and serious mm-hmm. instead of just it's kind of like what they do a lot of now times with westerns like once in a while a western comes out and it's like a big deal it might be good or whatever but like used to be they just crank tons of them out and right. like quality be damned and like just by law of numbers some of them were really good right and it didn't matter we don't have to watch the old crappy it, ones it wasn't like a bunch of executives got in them and they were like what if we made a western that was artistic in nature well, yeah, Kevin just like Costner the, did that. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> right, and yeah, and yeah. to an extent, Clint Eastwood, but you know, he was good at it. You know, yeah, I mean, he just, so um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, the good westerns destroyed the western. I think. Yeah, you could no longer pump them out. Um, you know, like pulp novels, right? Because there had been good ones that now people expected to be the ones, <laughs> right? Right. If it's not yeah. Unforgiven and doesn't win the Oscar, then yeah. you know why do you even bother? Right. And I think maybe the music biopic. Not that like Rocket Man was trying to be, you know, win the Oscar and be so serious, but like Bohemian Rhapsody certainly ended up going down that road. Um, because I mean, the music biopic is a genre that goes back to the beginning of movies yeah or sound movies at least Mm -hmm. and um one uh in this twitter uh war one uh (laughs) i don't remember who uh one person pointed out as one of their favorites was yankee doodle dandy and i don't know if you've ever seen that with james cagney so not he uh plays uh i mean james cagney you know for those who haven't been keeping up with 1930s film stars um was uh you know, at the time, extremely famous and mostly well known for playing gangsters in the Warner Brothers, uh, you know, like early gangster movies. A tough guy uh, and, um, you know, kind of an ethnic spitfire type. Um, but he was also a song and dance man. Like he grew up in vaudeville and he uh, plays in the movie Yankee Doodle Dandy. He plays the songwriter George M. Cohan, who wrote the song I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy and like a bunch of patriotic, you know, those kind of like early Broadway, early, you know, 1900s type songs that now most people would probably think are like super corny. Um, But like Cagney just like chews, it just squeezes every last drop out of this role. Mm -hmm. And the movie is directed by Michael Curtiz, who also directed Casablanca and, um, you know, it as well as a lot of other great movies, Errol Flynn movies and others. So like, you know, he really knew what he was doing. Just an incredible craftsman. And um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it might have won the Oscar for best movie. It was certainly on the like a hundred best movies of uh, the 20th century AFI list that came out at the end of this, you know, 1999 or whatever. And, you know, generally considered a classic. And there's tons of examples like that. There's like the Cole Porter story and then this movie and then that movie. I'm not, I'm not saying they're all great mm-hmm. or whatever. There's movies about composers, you know, back mm-hmm. in the day. I mean, I know we have like Amadeus, but that's like 40 years ago. Yeah. But back in the day, it was like, you know, composers were sort of well-known or conductors were like well-known enough people in the pop culture that you can make a movie about it um and uh so yeah so that i i think it you know kind of has a lot of roots Mm -hmm. and um and then a lot of them were kind of trashy which is kind of fun too yeah trashy or at least you know people trying something i mean like you know oliver stone he's a a guy but he's a guy (laughs) right but uh at least at least the doors was not 
like straightforward in some ways, you know? Sure. Okay. And I, I, that movie has a lot of problems, <laughs> um, but like, it's kind of good. I, I, I'm, I don't hate the doors. I actually like that. I like that movie kind of, um, as far as biopics, I'll, I'll watch when they're on. Um, and like around the same era, like I like La Bamba a lot. I think La Bamba's good. Yeah, I have to say I've not seen a lot of these movies in like a long time. Yeah. Like La Bamba, Great Balls of Fire, I saw those when yeah. they kind of came out when right. I was like a you know, tween or something. Right. Um The Doors I haven't seen in a long time. I whenever I go and back and revisit an Oliver Stone movie, I find that it doesn't hold up. I mean, there's a lot of weird Oliver Stone stuff going on in that movie. For yeah. Sure. And I think uh you know, for better or worse, that became the Doors and Jim Morrison. Yes, totally. Which is, and it still is, honestly. Yeah. Like I, like I, I swear, if you got like a a uh, criminal sketch artist to like draw Jim Morrison on the description of the average American, right? It would be Val Kilmer. It, it's Val Kilmer, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple of people shouted out Sid and Nancy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember about that being very good. I haven't seen it in a while, but Alex Cox, director of Repo Man, mm-hmm. uh, Gary Oldman as Sid Vicious. Uh, I remember really liking it. Twenty uh, Four Hour Party People. I know our, our former guest Jeff Terich uh, yeah. particularly singled that one out, and yeah. I was like, "Yeah, that's the one. That is the one. That's that's a great movie." Yeah. Yeah. Which is again, it's a it's a rock doc about a music promoter, right? Um, but still, sir, without question, a rock, you know, a, a music biopic. Yeah, totally. Um, about the Manchester, uh, you know, factory scene uh, in the in the eighties. Uh, just this incredible scene of music. Uh, everybody from Joy Division all the way through to like the Happy Mondays and and the Manchester kind of movement, and um, you know, just a a wild tale, uh, kind of like almost like a Catch Me If You Can sort of ca- tale about this, uh, you know. This, you know, real life promoter who just had this crazy vision and managed to keep the plate spinning at all times while dealing with these other insane musicians and other, you know, issues going on in the world. Yeah. Um, just a real blast. You know, it's funny, though, for it being such a, a lengthy genre, I think it's revealing how few indisputable classics people can even name right. when we pose the question. Like, I think that's revealing <laughs> that that we're mostly you, you cap out around like one or two that are undeniably great. And then a lot of people, a lot that people are like, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. That's a good movie. Yeah. And then a lot of things that people either don't like or have just, you know, differences of opinion on, you know? And like there, it's not even like you could go through like your great di- director's short list and see like how many of them did one. Right. The, the, the vast majority of the answer is none. Like they didn't do any, you know? Yeah. Uh, they stayed away from it for right. whatever reason. So right. a couple that were um, mentioned that never happened yeah. uh, was apparently Todd Haynes uh, was with Michelle Williams going to make a Peggy Lee uh, biopic. Hmm. And it just recently was announced that it's not happening. Yeah. Um, Speaking of which, I think it seems likely that the Scorsese Grateful Dead movie like probably doesn't happen, right? Like, Yeah, sure. Right. I mean, I guess I guess, I guess that's a little bit a bit banal. The chances are any announced movie doesn't happen. Right. The odds are against every movie. Jonah Hill was out running around talking about it, but Scorsese and they haven't they haven't hasn't said much. Yeah, they haven't cast the rest of the movie, and right. there's no you know shoot no, date. Yeah, as far up. as we know, nothing's happened. Right. Um, another one that never happened that like I always wanted to have happen was speaking of Scorsese was that he was going to make a Dean Martin biopic with Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm, this was mm-hmm. going on. This was like a ten year thing, where like every couple of years you'd hear about this, and it'd be like. That should be really cool. It's yeah. Dean Martin, such an interesting guy, like the opposite of his own public image, and um, kind of a dark guy in a weird way. Tom Hanks, you know, this was back when he was still like the most popular actor, yeah. And you could really see him digging into this role, and um, you know, kind of exposing just a different view of like that whole Rat Pack thing, yeah. Um, so that's uh, so. There's a few, you know. You'd mentioned Selena, yeah. Um, I like Selena. I mean, like I like Eight Mile. But like, I don't think anyone thinks of Eight Miles like a great movie. It's a it's a cable movie that's on. And you watch it for thirty minutes and like, yes, you know, and it's that's fine. I, yeah. Like you know, it, it, but and you know, I think Straight Outta Compton's basically going to be that too. It's a, a few years old at this point. Yeah, I like Straight Outta Compton. I like Straight Outta Compton. Fine, but like th- these aren't these are no one's idea of great movies. Yeah, and that's you fine. And like that's, the trashy ones are fine. Yeah, like there's been you know a ton of like. 
you know, the ja- the, the Jackson story movies. Yeah, that, yeah, that I used yeah. to watch those back in the day. They were on VH1 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, always very entertaining. Movies that rock. Uh, yeah. There was, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> movies that rock. Uh, man, if they hadn't had that name, we would have got it. Um, uh, the... I didn't see the Motley Crue, the Dirt one, where yeah, that's right. Machine Gun Kelly played Tommy Lee. Yeah, uh, I, I know that that movie's out. It's on like Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I never watched it, but, but yeah. that seems like it would be an entertaining watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also didn't see the Pam and Tommy series, but I guess that's arguably a music biopic. Yeah, I guess so. And I mean, we're doing uh, you know episodic rock docs, right? It's so. a music biopic TV. The TV, you know, yeah. the TV version, the American Crime Story version. Yes. Of a, but, you know, he's it's not only about him as a musician, I believe. It's about him and his other roles, <laughs> <laughs> his other capacities. Yeah. Uh, but uh, certainly he is a noted musician. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that's uh, that. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we just uh, maybe we're just picking a target of the biopic. Or maybe I just get annoyed because people are like, hey, when are you going to do one about Get On Up, the James Brown thing? And I'm like, that's not a rock doc. It says in the name, doc. That's documentary, not movie or some biopic. I got to admit, I've been surprised how many people in my life are confused by the premise of this show, which I think is very straightforward and right there in the title. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we we primarily talk about uh, documentaries. (laughs) Right, <laughs> which are for the most part nonfiction. <laughs> Although our very first episode was about one that contained fictional elements. That so, might have been know. that might have been where the confusion set in <laughs> was that was that we had to explain that we only talk about documentaries, and for as far as episode one is concerned, there's a great degree of fictional information <laughs> included. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Bob Dylan. We confused the brand yeah. right away. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, but, so, I don't know, man, but I don't really see us covering, bi- like, I just don't, I don't know, there's tons of documentaries, whatever, somebody else do the biopic yeah. podcast. I think I think our, our stance, though, I'll, to to push into a third genre, I think our stance has officially softened on concert films. I think we're weakening on concert films. Yes, and so Erg a Music War will be included, would discussed soon, and after that, opening the door for... You know, stop making sense. The last waltz, you name it. Do I name it? Is Go that, ahead. Is that true? <laughs> what, what, what do you have, do you have now that now that the door has opened to concert films? Do you have do you have something especially objectionable you've been keeping from me? No, I don't. Okay. I mean, I just I don't know where you. I mean, I guess you maybe it would be like the prestigious noted ones. Yeah, in a way. Right, right. The ones that are like marketed as a documentary, like made cinematic. They need to have, the, you know, right. It, they have it, to be released in a theater or something. Right. It can't just be. Here was a concert, and right. it's been, and they did record it. Right. Like, hey, one time they released a DVD of an old ninety sevens concert from nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. Like, I don't think that you know. Merits. Although it's an that's an interesting direction for the show. That would be a whole <laughs> weird different take. <laughs> I, was, I was in a Sam Goody in two thousand five, and I found this DVD. Of a you know of 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 a Strokes concert, <laughs> forgotten DVD concert films yeah. would be uh, a maybe that's for the Patreon or something someday right, or right. whatever. Um, yeah, uh, but um, yeah, I still feel. I mean, the, the one that we're going to talk about, Erga Music War, which we will we'll get there, uh, is uh, interesting in its own right. Uh, a lot of the concert films. I mean, I just feel like it's like, hey, they're playing a concert. Cool. Hey, yeah. now that that's. Keith Richards playing Satisfaction. I don't know. Sometimes, what are you going to say? I mean, but you, uh, to your own admission, you feel that way about every movie. And <laughs> then we sit, then we sit down in front of these mics, and they influence, they convince you. When you put a mic in front of somebody's face, it convinces them that they have something to say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just feel like there's a lot of documentaries. I don't know. What there can are. I tell you? Yeah. Right. And I, I enjoy them. Um, so yeah, I think that, uh, covers the hot topics of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for, uh, bearing with us during our sort of summer weird hiatus thing. I guess to, to connect here, we could, we yeah. could add that, uh, so the, the reason the biopic has been in the news lately. Yes. Is, uh, the Baz Luhrmann Elvis movie. Yes. And so we will not be reviewing that. No, we haven't seen it. And can't say I honestly care too that much. I mean, I probably I kind of want to. Yeah, do you? I, I, I was at the movie theater the other night. 
Yeah. This is my first time my wife and I have gone to like the movies to us in two and a half years. Yeah. We went to see Thor, Love and Thunder. Okay. Fun but dumb. Seven out of ten, I would say. Okay. Uh, but that's, you a, know. that's that's a high mark. That's a, that's a, a gentleman C. <laughs> I mean, my mother in law watched the kid, and it was like, want to go to a movie? Sure. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, it was that was my Saturday night. It was a good time, um, and we got there early. Uh, and we're just sitting outside waiting while they're like cleaning the theater or whatever, um, you know, outside of the, the art, the actual theater inside. The, and there was a guy who was like a greaser dude, um, tattoos, you know, like greaser Elvis type hairdo walking by. What year was this? This was like 2020, <laughs> July. 20. Okay. Yeah. He's walking by. This is in Anaheim, California. And, um, Big he was, greaser scene. He was saying to his, yeah, middle aged greaser dude. Uh, and he's saying to his friend, uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to see Elvis. Uh, and the guy's like, didn't you already see it? And the guy was like, oh, it's my third time. Oh, man. So awesome. I say to the guy, I'm like, oh, you must really like this movie. He's like, yeah, man, it's great. Like, I took my girlfriend and I took my kid and I went, you know, I'm going again, like, with somebody, whatever. Like, this movie's incredible. The guy, you know, just like Elvis, total vibes. And this guy convinced me. I'm like, if this hardcore Orange County greaser dude is way into the Elvis movie, maybe there's something there. Okay. So fair enough. You take uh, it up with that guy if you want. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, I'll say that uh, we're gonna we're gonna do an episode on the 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 searcher, the Elvis Presley documentary. Yes. On now it's possible, HBO. depending on how things shake out, that that episode may have already been released. That, that episode of this podcast may have already been released. But by the time you hear it, what you're, I don't know. Right yeah. So okay. Fair you, enough. This is another little peek behind the screen. <laughs> Sometimes we record things out of order. And yeah. we don't remember or know what it's going to be. So uh, whatever your your comments will will be appropriate, regardless of whether it's the past, present, or future. Fair enough. Thanks for adding that. But yeah. Anyway, so yeah. we are going to cover that. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 We've got a couple of legitimate rock doc episodes coming up during the summer. That's right. It's not all hiatus. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in the fall, we'll be back, uh, just delivering the content that you know and love. Yeah. Travels will be over. Fish yeah. fish tour will be over. That's it. The fish is retiring. Finally. <laughs> they're not going to, they're not touring in the fall. Oh, so then we can so do I our podcast and get my life back. <laughs> uh, oh, you're going to be like a husband, father, journalist, <laughs> yeah. uh, podcaster, yeah. all the other ancillary yeah. roles of your life. Exactly. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Good to know. Well, yeah. there you go. That's how the uh, sausage is made. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening to rock docs. We're at rock docs pod on uh, Twitter. Leave us reviews and all that fun stuff. And, um, yeah. Uh, feel free to uh, join the conversation. Let us know about your favorite biopics and why we should pay attention to them. And uh, yeah, that's it. Rock Docs.